Uh, my question, sir, is uh, with the invention of these free trade agreements and the major loss of family wage and union jobs overseas, what's your plan to bring them back? Well, the, uh, it's a good place to end. Of all the issues that we're dealing with, what it comes down to in your life is can you find a job that pays well, has good benefits, allows you to support your family, and gives you some satisfaction, right? I mean, so much of whether or not America works, whether the American dream works or not, is tied up with jobs and tied up with work. And we've been losing jobs. We've been creating jobs too, but the problem is the jobs we're losing pay more and give better benefits than the jobs we're creating. Now, trade is part of that, although I have to tell you, I, am, I, am a, I believe in trade. I believe in the power of us trading with other countries to grow the economic pie for everybody. But the problem is, is that the way our trade deals have been structured are very good for Wall Street, but they're not so good for Main Street. Uh, they're very good for corporate profits, but they're not so good for your pocketbook. And the reason is that we generally have not had strong labor agreements or environmental agreements that are enforced inside of these trade deals. And so, so what happens is a U.S. company goes over to China, ships all the equipment over there, and in China, people aren't subject to union rules. They're not subject to the same overtime rules. Obviously, the wages are much, much lower. In some cases, safety standards are non-existent. And then those goods are shipped right back into the United States. Uh, the corporation does great, but we now may get a $10 sneaker. The problem is we don't have a job. And, and so what I've said is we're not going to be able to perfectly match or compete with other countries in terms of wages. And we can't just draw a, a moat around America. We've got to trade. We've got to be involved in the global commerce. But what we can do is make sure that the White House is serious about enforcing some basic provisions. Uh, when it comes to labor, for example, no child labor, no, uh, no intimidating or harassing or arresting or killing union organizers. Uh, no, you know, that there have to be some, some basic environmental standards that exist. Uh, you know, China can't just spew out as much pollution as it wants, even though it's coming over the Pacific and drifting over us. You know, safety standards. We can't have kids, our kids, chewing on uh, toys with lead paint on them. Uh, so there are a whole series of just basic standards that we should insist upon from our trading partners. Now, we should also insist on reciprocity in terms of access to their markets. If Korea is sending hundreds of thousands of cars into our market, and we can't even sell 10,000 of our cars into Korea, that's a problem. And, and, and we've got to ask for reciprocity. And they've got to protect our intellectual property. Our biggest advantage is going to be our technology and our science. But if other countries are going ahead and just grabbing that technology and replicating it without providing any kind of you know, fair licensing agreement or, or, or uh, reimbursement, then that's theft. But it's the kind of theft that hurts our long-term competitiveness. So we've got to have a president who is serious about enforcing these laws. And that's not what we've had over the last seven and a half years. But the last thing, the last point I want to make on this, though, is even if we get our trade deals right, the challenge we've got in a global economy, we're going to have to work harder, we're going to have to work smarter, we're going to have to work better. We're going to have to produce more engineers, and we're going to have to produce more scientists. We're going to have to double our investment in basic research in science. Uh, we've got to generate more scientists and engineers. You know, that's always been America at its best. Innovating, discovering new ways of doing things. And we should be unleashing that creativity and that power, and that's part of the job of the federal government. It always has. You know, th that's why when you hear people say, I, 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 I just want a smaller government. No, you want a smarter government. I mean, there have been times in our life
you know. The question is, is, is our government spending your money wisely or is it spending your money badly? If it's spending your money in Iraq, that's a bad expenditure. If it's spending your money in doubling our research and sci our, our basic science budget, if it's spending your money rebuilding our infrastructure, if it's spending your money making sure that the next generation gets the kind of college education they need to compete and create new products and new jobs, that's smart spending. And we've got to spend some money in those smart areas if we're going to succeed in the 21st century. That's the kind of leadership I want to provide. Thank you so much, Ben. I appreciate you. Thank you.